I get so many requests to demonstrate this technique, I just had to include it in the DVD. What we have here is a very common situation where you can almost imagine yourself standing in very shallow water in this river, and you can see that by looking downwards into the water, which we know is clear, we can see the rocks and stones just below the surface, or in the case of one or two of them, half of it's submerged and half of it's above the water. Now you can see as your eye starts moving up the river, it starts to pick up the surface of the water at a much shallower angle, so you can see less and less below the water, but what you're tending to pick up now with this pale blue is the distant pale blue in the sky. Right, now I've put an horizon line about three quarters of the way up the picture. It's simply to give us a reference point to start from with all our other angles. If we take that as our reference point, then the angle at the left hand side, which comes out of the picture around about two thirds of the way up, we take that and it's from roughly the centre of the picture. If we simply transfer that angle from about there to there, let's make a mark there. Right, now you can see that's quite surprisingly a shallow angle. Let's take that angle and slide that across to about there. So that gives us an angle about there. So again, if we follow that picture, make sure the picture incidentally is straight compared to your own painting. But if we hold that pencil like that, you can see that we've got our angle pretty accurate and it's something like that. Right, now I've put some of the the trees in very, very roughly. That'll change shape as I paint over them, but it gives me a guideline. Right, now we've got this large rock in the foreground, which looks a little bit like a loaf of bread, I suppose. So it's fairly prominent, so we'll, we'll draw that. Right, I'm gonna finish that off, put a few more rocks in, and I'm just going to add some masking fluid with the color shaper around the rocks that are actually sticking out of the water. We don't put masking fluid on the ones that are underneath the water. Very simple sky, no need for any more detail. And that's fine, we'll, we'll leave that like that. Right, now I've added a little bit of light red to the ultramarine blue to give us a, a medium wash of a warm gray. That's going in the mountain area. Then I'll mix up various mixes of raw sienna and lemon yellow and uh, ultramarine blue, and we'll put those into these tree and grass areas to bring them forward. When I'm actually painting the grassy areas, which are obviously flat, I'm still remembering to paint them horizontal. Remember, as I said in a previous lesson and other lessons, paint the way things go or grow or flow. Uh, but you can see what's happened with the the lighter underpainting now has not left ugly white flecks in the tree area where we wouldn't have wanted them. Just going to add some darker colour into the base just to represent some darker trees here in shadow. Right now I'm just going to put the first wash of some dark on the river bank there just underneath the bank just touching it in here and there little hint into the distance, doesn't want to be too dark, otherwise you can see the way it's coming forward. So we'll just blot that and that gives us about what we want for that sort of distance. Right now, before I started putting the clean water into the river, I put together several little washes so that they're ready and available when I need to put them in. I can't afford to wait for this to start drying <coughs> whilst I'm trying to mix the colours. And what I've done is I've taken some neat burnt umber here, added some ultramarine blue to give me a darker brown mix, and then I've done the same with the light red. The neat stuff here I mix with the blue to give us a darker brown, and in between these two colours. And I've also put out a little bit of raw sienna just in case I need to lighten anything off. And then the last thing I'll do is to just put a little mix of ultramarine blue. And now you can see the advantage of being able to paint freely straight across those rocks, straight across the masking fluid. Right now I've started that in the middle of the river. I'll take that up with clean water up to the top end of the river and that will dry off quite a bit. I might actually take some of that out with a paper towel in a moment or two, but what I'm going to do in a second is to gradually bring in 
some of the darker colour here. See I'm giving a little bit of variety, we've got some reddy brown and we've got some more of a yellowy brown. The yellowy brown being the burnt umber, the red brown being more of the light red mix. Now I'm going to bring the ultramarine blue, a little bit stronger, but I'm going to just paint that down into the, the brown and let it blend together. You see there's a mix of blue and brown actually on the brush, but I'm going to take some of that out, put some clean water on, squeeze the brush out, get the excess water out, because what I want to do is to just blend that up there so there's no hard edge and bring some of that blue down into the river like that. You can see the way this reflection has picked up in the river of these trees. So this is where we mix a little bit of the raw sienna which just gives us that little hint of green, not too much, but it's just a reflection there in the river. There's no problem with this, you see everything's nice and liquid, nice and wet, so we're getting away with this. Just bearing in mind that the tree line finishes here, so we're not going to get any reflection of trees in this part, this is going to be pure blue. Right, I mix, I'm putting quite a strong added bit of raw sienna right into the foreground here, just to lighten off the riverbed a little bit and give us a little bit more opportunity to put darker rocks in as well as take the colours out, just darken some of that again, which is diluting quite quickly because of the amount of water. Now I'm going to put a few little streaks across the river like that because it represents where the water's being broken as it's just trickling gently between the rocks. You can see up here there's quite a nicely broken edge. Absolutely vital though that you keep that and those little lines horizontal so that it keeps the river and the water looking totally flat. Okay you can see I'm just, even while it's still wet, I'm just taking the opportunity to touch in some darks underneath these rocks that are actually going to be visible on the surface. If I've got to say that there are two must-haves in this exercise. One of them is a large soft brush, something like this, so that you're able to paint on very liquid washes but very gently, because when we come to put the final washes on, the colour we have underneath all the underlying layers, we absolutely do not want to be lifting that off. And by putting any sort of water on, as we're going to have to with the, with the, uh, the final glaze, then that's when the danger arises. The second must have is that the paper must have dried absolutely bone dry. It's no use having the paper partially dry or slightly damp or even just about dry because I guarantee you that you will lift off colour and smudge and I know this is mud anyway under the water but there's clean mud and there's dirty mud. At the moment it's clean mud and we want to keep it like that. 